Blake's hates him. This ugly piece of shit is making fields and burning 1500 and basically you're stupid. There are many things the average Yu-Gi-Oh player usually hates going up against on a relaxing Sunday locals, body odor notwithstanding, and some of those things include burn damage and field nukes. Mix them all together and you get the best of both worlds, or at least the above average of both worlds, the prime example being volcanics. They were used in Yu-Gi-Oh GX by the man with the wide nose, whose dual disc also doubled as a gun, so he could shoot you if you happen to beat him. A man this sufficiently prepared for duel must certainly be using a very versatile deck. So let's check out what Volcanics are about and why this mid-GX archetype suddenly got a surge of popularity during the start of the Pendulum era. We start off with Volcanic Shell. It's a level 1 pyro with 100 attack and 0 defense and once per turn, you can pay 500 life points, add 1 Volcanic Shell from your deck to your hand. This card must be in the graveyard to activate and to resolve this effect. There is really not much to take in here. Fire is the least represented attribute in the game, barring Divine and Laugh, and unless your defense is 200, it doesn't matter for much. The fact that all Volcanics are pyro type means they have to rely almost entirely on Royal Firestorm guards for any kind of generic support, and this might as well be a Volcanic monster given that you never wanna run any less than 3 of them due to their amazing recycling ability. And when it comes to Shell's actual effect, it's a good piece of discard fodder that replenishes itself, then again most decks nowadays would much rather prefer the instant benefit of Trick Clown, since there's not much room for the grind game. However, in a Volcanic deck, this is most often a trade-off, and this is why. You see, Volcanics focus on a set of cards named Blaze Accelerators, the first one in line being the titular Continuous spell, which allows you to target one monster your opponent controls, send one Pyrotype monster with 500 or less attack from your hand to the graveyard, and if you do, destroy that target, but you cannot declare an attack the turn you activate this effect. As far as removal went in 2007, this was pretty decent. If you loaded it with a shell, you could potentially wipe three of your opponent's monsters like brap 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 without any restrictions other than the battle phase lockout. However, rather than the simple field clearing, Blaze Accelerator doesn't do much, much like its evolved edition, Tri Blaze Accelerator. You activate it by sending one face up Blaze Accelerator you control to the graveyard. You can send one Pyrotype monster from your hand to the graveyard and target and destroy one monster your opponent controls and inflict 500 damage to them, but again, you cannot attack that turn. It is objectively better due to having space for any Pyrotype monster along with the added burn damage, but the reliance on you already controlling a Blaze Accelerator makes it brick way too often. It was a decent card to use before 2014, but come Circuits of Eternity, both of these were immediately rendered archaic by the release of Blaze Accelerator Reload. <laughs> Wiggly boys. It's a continuous trap, and its name becomes Tri Blaze Accelerator while in the spell and trap zone. During either player's main phase, you can send one volcanic card from your hand to the graveyard, and if you do, draw one card. You can only use this effect once per turn. During either player's main phase, you can banish this card from your graveyard, send one volcanic card from your deck to the graveyard. Oh, it sure is new challengers format in here. You can smell the consistency, feel the floating. While Reload may not have the destruction of the other two, and it specifically requires a volcanic monster as ammo, it gives the archetype plenty of consistency boosting as well as access to applying the effect during either player's turn, and I'll get to the importance of this in a minute. The graveyard effect is also nice given that some of your most important monsters benefit from being in the grave or getting sent there. Also, it can be sent to the graveyard directly from the deck by Paleozoic Marella, which leads to a whole new level of versatility. Not to mention, as long as you have a backup plan, Magic Planter can be used for even more draw power by sending your accelerator trap to the graveyard, so it's another very valid tech choice in the deck. An undisputable tree off, with the other two acting as supplementary options if you decide to be unique, meaning worse. As for the reason why the trap's quick effect is highly appreciated, we have Volcanic Scattershot. It's a level 2 with 500 attack and 0 defense, and if this card is sent to the graveyard, inflict 500 damage to your opponent. If this card is sent to the graveyard by the effect of a Blaze Accelerator card, you can send two Volcanic Scattershots from your hand and or deck to the graveyard, destroy all monsters your opponent controls. Alright, how do the kids say these days again? Yeah, sounds about right. Scattershot is completely ridiculous, and having one of them in your hand with reload on the field results in a quick play Raigeki along with 1500 burn damage. I mean, that power creeps up. Aye. And while there's a danger of running out of ammo if you blow your scatter load too early on, said problem is usually circumvented by Firestorm Guards, Jar of Avarice, or simply timing it well enough to put you in an advantage for the rest of the duel. Scattershot is the heart and soul of the deck, and there's literally no incentive to run any less than 3. Next up is Volcanic Counter, a level 3 with 300 attack and 1300 defense 
appearance, and when you take battle damage while this card is in your graveyard, banish it from your graveyard, then if there is a fire monster other than volcanic counter in your graveyard, inflict damage to your opponent equal to the amount of battle damage you took. Well, it's not a counter trap, but it sure as hell counts. How often do you see somebody surrender due to you simply having a card in the graveyard? With all the burn damage going on when playing volcanics, it's very unlikely that your opponent will often stay low on life points, which turns an inconspicuous counter in the graveyard into a deadly magic cylinder. However, the effect is mandatory, so it applies on the first instance of taking damage while the card is in the graveyard, so the opponent might easily be able to bait it out with lower attack monsters. Counter can be a pretty good safeguard late game, but its usage is too limited to run any more than one. Volcanic Blaster is the other level 3, it's got 1200 attack and 600 defense, and when it's destroyed by battle and sent to the graveyard, you can place one Volcanic Monster in your deck on top of your deck. Well, it sure isn't the Blaster I'd prefer to see in this deck. To be perfectly fair, it is the only archetypal way to search any Volcanic Monster, but this gun jams more often than an M16, which is not something you want clogging up your deck, I would imagine. It's an irrelevant piece of the first wave of the Volcanic archetype that has no place in any modern variants. Much like the next monster, Volcanic Slicer. It's a level 4 with 1800 attack and 1200 defense, and once per turn, you can inflict 500 damage to your opponent. If you activate this effect, this card cannot attack during this turn. I imagine the original design philosophy behind Volcanics was trading your battle phase for a nice amount of removal and burn, and with an attack value as high as 1800 on a level 4 monster, you could make up for the lost battle damage as soon as the next turn comes up. It's just that, again, there's not much reason to run this guy nowadays, as the game has gotten way too fast for any of his utility to come into play. Freaking diet strict stars. As for the not crap level 4, we have Volcanic Rocket. It's got 1900 attack and 1400 defense, and when it's summoned, you can add one Blaze Accelerator card from your deck or graveyard to your hand. Ah, TCG exclusives. Sometimes you're wonderful like this, and sometimes you're. Whatever the hell this is. Released alongside the first wave of Volcanics, Rocket was way ahead of its time with a fat 1900 attack, an effect that applies on any form of summon and searches any Blaze Accelerator card from the deck and the graveyard, giving the archetype a level of consistency it might have never reached without the TCG's intervention. It's fun to consider how similar Rocket could have been to the likes of Warrior of Atlantis or Harpy Queen, meaning a high attack monster you can discard to get access to an important playmaker of yours, but Rocket just lets you keep the attack while fetching said playmaker. Run 3 at all times if you plan on making any plays. As simple as that. Their level 5 is Volcanic Hammerer. It's got 2400 attack and 1500 defense, and once per turn, you can inflict damage to your opponent equal to the number of Volcanic monsters in your graveyard times 200. If you activate this effect, this card cannot attack during this turn. Oh, it's Slicer's daddy. Adorable but unplayable, pretty much for the same reasons. If anything, this one is worse due to requiring a tribute, and you will most often want to recycle your Volcanic monsters, so the graveyard might not always be packed with burn damage material. Really hammer that point home. Now for something in Interesting. Their level 6 is Volcanic Queen, it's got 2500 attack and 1200 defense, cannot be normal summoned or set, and can only be special summoned from your hand to your opponent's side of the field by tributing one monster your opponent controls. If you special summon this card, you cannot normal summon or set that turn. Once per turn, you can send one other card you control to the graveyard to inflict 1000 damage to your opponent. During your end phase, either tribute one other monster or take 1000 damage. Oh man, remember the times when a kaiju monster did things other than just remove absolutely everything? Yeah, there was incentive to to leave it on the opponent's field, for example, Queen here makes them waste resources or take burn damage while it's in their control, both of which are things Volcanics are based around. That said, this is not something you generally ran in your main deck, it was a side option at best during formats with a high number of monsters you would have trouble getting rid of by standard Volcanic means, and not like the card was unique, as Lava Golem had been a thing for quite a few years prior. It can be a funky surprise option, but you might as well resort to the Kaiju Conglomerate at that point, given that it doesn't eliminate your summon for the turn. Fun fact though, the titular queen is on the monster's forehead, joining relinquished in the oh god what is that on your forehead and why did it take me 8 years to see it club. She's pretty hot. The final volcanic boss monster is Volcanic Doomfire, which are also the words I would use to describe Mick Gordon's Doom soundtrack. Anyway, it's a level 8 with 3000 attack and 1800 defense, cannot be normal summoned or set, and can only be special summoned by sending a face up triblaze accelerator you control to the graveyard. During your opponent's battle phase, your opponent must attack this monster with any attack position monsters they control. When this card destroys a monster and sends it to the graveyard, destroy all monsters the opponent controls and inflict 500 damage to your opponent for each monster destroyed by this effect. In the Yu-Gi-Oh equivalent of the Yellowstone Caldera eruption, Doomfire is essentially able to replace a dead scatter shot by wiping the opponent's entire field by itself and then some, and it's not like it's particularly hard to summon given that Reload is treated as Triblaze while it's on the field. It can make dead hands deader, but it can also be insanely fun to pull off. Probably not worth running in builds aiming to be competitive, but it doesn't hurt in more casual variants. Their last monster is Volcanic Rat, a level 1 normal monster with 500 attack and defense. 
Hmm. Is that some fusion synergy? One of their support spells is the quick play Wildfire. Pay 500 life points, destroy a face up blaze accelerator card you control, and destroy all monsters on the field. Then special summon one Wildfire token, which is a level 3 pyro type with 1000 attack and defense, in attack position. Also, you cannot declare an attack this turn. Better than you'd think, worse than you'd hope. It is a quick field nuke in a deck that prides itself on quick field nukes, but there are already enough field wipes in the archetype that don't also destroy your monsters or prevent you from attacking that turn. Then again, tokens are pretty appreciated nowadays. Much like Doomfire, consider running one for some fun surprises. Their final card is Volcanic Recharge, a normal trap that says return up to 3 Volcanic Monster cards from your graveyard to your deck. Don't you tell me what to do. Run Firestorm in Avarice. As for the Volcanic Grades, while Accelerators are searchable, Shell can search itself and Reload offers draw power, Volcanic Monsters themselves can sometimes be hard to come by and besides outside support which plays into Reload shenanigans, there's not too much going on here. Very close to a green due to Reload's effect though. Besides Rocket, the power output isn't too high when it comes to battle damage, given that Doomfire isn't ran too often, but a quick play Regeki is always nice, even though it's kinda their only consistent form of removal and may take a while to reload. Their comeback ability is limited to how many ways you can find to shuffle Scattershot back into the deck, of which there aren't many, but barely enough for a yellow. I really need to introduce a 5 point scale. They have absolutely no protection, but Scattershot's replenishing ability as well as Reload's draw power turn them into a splashable engine in quite a few decks, mainly Trains, Heroes, Paleozoics and the ever so dreaded Demise set for pass. Here's a profile for a somewhat functional Volcanic Paleo deck, because if I'm being perfectly honest, you're not gonna get far with Volcanics nowadays without splashing it with at least 20 traps. Volcanics are a fun little bunch of cards that managed to stand the test of time, if only due to their gimmick being so interestingly unique. Given that they were so popular a few years back, hell even topping events left and right, I feel like there's a very high possibility that we might see new additions to this archetype soon enough, be it a Link Monster or not. Regardless of how it turns out, playing against these dudes always guarantees at least one fairly unpleasant scattershot to the face, and as a lover of archetypal nukes, I will greet it with open arms and suffer third degree burns. Greetings everyone, Rada here. We over here at Ranked and Yu-Gi-Oh like to do jokes and fun. No we don't. However, now at Christmas time, I'd like to share with you what it all means to me as a person, because after all, I am human just like you and me. We here celebrate Christmas and only Christmas. We have our normal Christmas tree with first edition dark artists hung from every limb. We have our presents such as a single piece of chocolate spread out evenly across the entire table. We want to wish all the best to everyone who celebrates Christmas. And to the rest of you, you better get with the program, or we're gonna have some issues on our hands. How, how was that? Was that was that good? Am I gonna get upvotes and the likes? I'm stuck in the fucking chimney! We have a chimney? Hey there everyone, thank you for watching this episode of Archetype Archive, and I bet you didn't see it coming given that the last one was like, what, 6 days ago? Regardless, have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year, be sure to donate to the Patreon if you wanna keep the channel going and maybe even request some Archetype Archives on it, maybe I will stream that Duelist of the Roses sometime, and I will definitely see you next time.